In today's video, we're going to be comparing and of course benchmarking the three best graphics cards that you can easily find at under $100. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we have what I think are the three best used graphics cards that you can easily find under $100. And of course, we're gonna be benchmarking the heck out of them. And if you're new here and you wanna see other GPU review videos just like this one, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check these cards out. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their new B550 motherboards. So before introducing these cards, I think it's important to mention that, yeah, you can find all three of these graphics cards at under $100, but before you go hunting, just know that you're certainly going to see all three of these cards being sold for over $100 as well. This video isn't showcasing graphics cards that are always under $100. You're still going to have to do some due diligence and sniping with some patience, but after analyzing the market, all of these are certainly doable under our price range. Without further ado, the first one that I have here is absolutely no stranger to the channel. This is the GTX 970 specifically this Asus Strix edition. I've made several videos featuring the GTX 970, including my best value GPUs video, which is pretty recent, but today we're benchmarking it against cards that are exactly at the same price of $100. The second card is actually brand new to the channel, and this is the RX 570 4 gigabyte model, specifically the gigabyte version. Now don't get me wrong, you can certainly find an 8 gigabyte model of the 570, or heck, even sometimes a 580 for under $100, but I feel like that for the average PC builder that's not scouring the market every last second, the 574 gigabyte model is the most appropriate for this price point. And finally, the last card that I have here today is definitely a throwback, the R9 398 gigabyte, and this one is from MSI as you can see here. The R9 390 has literally never made it onto a ZTT video, so I'm pretty excited just about that. But yeah, this 8 gigabyte model is certainly pretty easy to find at $100, and I already knew that it could hang with newer cards like the RX 570, so I knew this would make a great fit for this video. Now before getting into the benchmarks, there's two topics that are important to discuss outside of just which one performs better, and that's power consumption and the age of the graphics card. The RX 570 is still pretty new in my mind as it was released in April of 2017, so that's definitely nothing to worry about, but if you decide to go with one of the other cards, that's certainly something to consider. The GTX 970, believe it or not, is almost six years old as it was first released in September 2014, and the R9 390 shortly afterwards in June of 2015, so these GPUs are definitely a bit older than the 570. This is important because driver releases, tech support and especially warranties don't last forever so if you're the type of person that just wants to buy one graphics card and keep it for like five to six years then you might not want to go with the card that was released in 2014 and like i said the other topic to consider is power consumption none of these cards are ridiculous power hogs but the r9 390 is going to use a decent amount of more power compared to the other two take this with a grain of salt but the minimum power supply requirements for the newer and more efficient rx 570 is only 450 watts the r9 390 is 500 to 600 600 watts and then the GTX 970 is only 500 watts. You can certainly get away with lower wattage with these cards and the wattage doesn't mean everything. You still need the correct amount of amps on the 12 volt line. But yeah, you're definitely going to need to budget for a beefier power supply if you decide to go with something like the R9 390. But yeah, without a doubt, the most important factor outside of what price you can snag one of these at is how well it performs in games. So let's just start benchmarking because I'm pretty sure that's the reason you clicked on this video. Just as a disclaimer, our testing rate today is my old editing PC, which is rocking a Ryzen 7 2700X at stock speeds and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 megahertz. The first game up was Fortnite and here we kept the settings at 1080p and low but with far view distance aka pro settings and here the RX 570 scored a bit higher but all three of these maintain a very solid close to 200 FPS. Next up was CSGO in 1080p and low settings for our last CPU demanding one which really doesn't paint the best comparison here and once again all three cards perform roughly the same amount and this is probably just bottlenecked by the 2700X 
X as expected. Getting into the more GPU demanding titles was Rainbow Six Siege. This was tested with the built-in benchmarking tool, but here you're seeing some gameplay footage and in 1080p and very high settings, the R9 390 actually cranked out a few more FPS, but all three of these cards were right around that target 144 FPS. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds followed and in 1080p and medium settings, the GTX 970 actually did considerably better than the R9 390 and the RX 570 with 111 FPS, but do keep in mind that consistency is not something that you're going to get with these huge open world battle royale games when testing. Borderlands 3 was up next and in 1080p and medium settings with the built-in benchmarking tool, the GTX 970 did just a tad bit better, but all three of these cards maintained around that 60 FPS target mark. Next up was Gears 5, also using the built-in benchmarking tool and in 1080p and medium settings, here the GTX 970 and R9 390 got the exact same result of 71 FPS and then the RX 570 actually lagged a bit behind but 58 FPS. And finally for our last game was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Can we take a minute to appreciate that it went on this nasty six kill streak during this benchmarking run and I'm not gonna lie I'm considering going pro after watching this for a few times but here in 1080p and normal aka medium settings the R9 390 actually cranked out one more FPS than the RX 570 but the GTX 970 still scored a solid FPS average of 76. So yeah as you can see all three of these graphics cards are pretty much performing neck and neck with each other. I think every one of these cards beat the other two cards in at least one title so in terms of performance you can't go wrong with any of them. If you're sitting in front of all three of these cards on eBay for the exact same price I would probably recommend the RX 570 just because of how much newer it is but I would try and hold out for at least the 8 gigabyte model and like I said earlier it's certainly possible to snipe even an RX 580 at $100 if you have the proper GPU sniping skills.